What's up, y'all? This is when you're listening to the Cabbages podcast. Gary. Hi, Gary. Hello, Gary. I am so annoyed that we did this. Annoyed? We just got off of an amazingly fun film. We did How High. That was fun. Remember when I tried to do as many bong hits as they smoked weed together? (laughs) I loved that. It was really funny. That was great. And now we're back to watching fucking basketball movies again. How does this fucking happen? Well, I'm telling you, Gary, they're inextricably linked. There's nothing you can do. It's inescapable. I looked at Fredro Starr's filmography after Mm. we watched this. He has done so many movies. Yeah. So many movies. That's true. Tubi has loads of them, but he's done so many movies. He's been in real movies. This one is special. Like he worked with real directors. You want to know what he did before this movie? You want to know what he yeah. did? Because I don't want to talk about basketball. You're going to talk about basketball. We have a great guest on. We have Win. She's fantastic. I can't oh, wait true. to talk to her. Like, but you realize her. She's a basketball person. You're a basketball person. Just give me that. But like, do you know that Frederick Starr already obviously Onyx 1993 back to fuck up mm-hmm. fucking gets mm-hmm. 1995. Mm-hmm. It is all we got is us. Like Billboard charting. He's got hits. Slam. We all have that. But then mm-hmm. like. He like stars in this HBO TV movie called Strap, directed by Forrest Whitaker. You know, he follows that up with he's in Abel Ferrara's 1995 film, The Addiction, and then he's Whoa. in Spike Lee's Clockers. We could have, then done why did you pick this basketball Clockers. movie? I thought we were getting, <laughs> I don't know what we got here. I don't know how we got here. It was a like New York my rapper movie with a New fire. York rapper. Well, it was. Like, it does make clockers. a lot more sense than just being basketball. You could have done clockers. I you picked this one. I'm, I'm wild. I, just, on I don't know what's going on. I, just, I I'm feel so. Like I'm I losing. was so happy when we started. I was like, oh, this movie is entirely basketball. Like I, I feel like I'm losing control here, and I just, I just. Do you know that I Sticky Fingers? Promise was supposed you, to I'm be in not this movie? doing this on purpose. They're linked, man. Did you know Sticky Fingers was supposed to be in this movie? Because I'm still don't want to talk about basketball. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to play Drano. We could have had two oh, Onyx cool. members of this movie. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to keep throwing fun facts at you. Because no you know offense what? to Antoine Tanner. Shout no, Antoine Tanner, Tanner, and obviously this was a great beginning he did for Antoine with Tanner. That role. But he also is a great... But that would have been really dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going to tell you. Give him, give, him, give him credit. Like obviously, Yeah, yeah, props. But I, you know, I would obviously, much you know rather have seen two members of Onyx in that film. Well, I see two other but like, yeah. like I know you're a big fan of Antoine Tanner because of his work on Black Jesus, but like, you know... I am. At, and and also his uh his 108 episodes of One Tree Hill, um I know you're big. You know I that. missed probably about 107 of those. <laughs> okay, well there we go. <laughs> I think I watched one of those and was like, "What are you people talking about?" I'm I just know, <laughs> I just know the only way I'm going to get through this episode because, again, I am not a basketball person. If you watch this show, if you listen to this podcast, you know this is not my area of expertise. I'm a film guy. I'm a hip hop guy. This but is what like, I understand. but like. Rhea Perlman, you're starting to learn a little bit. I know. You're starting I mean, to learn actually, as well. I think we've, I think I we've reached a point where movie. we can jump from beginner to like intermediate amounts of basketball talk. I want to just make clear to you. I'm gonna, maybe maybe to I'll start ramping it up. No, no. I'll as we watch more we, of these. Before we get to it's our the guests, basketball I want to make season, clear to Gary. you that this it's not basketball season this is hip-hop movie. this is rapper movie season and i want to point out to you it's what happened season, because this baby. we're getting back to this sort of bad movie bullshit that we used to do we're getting back mm, in there and okay. i'm not loving that because no no i've tried you know, to stop this in the past i get it if this is this what you're was, saying this movie was not a success and i want to point out as much as you know it's got a terrible rotten tomatoes score, it made money right uh Theoretically, like a little bit, eked out a little bit. like it's it, not enough, not enough. Okay, fair. But enough. I, I want and like obviously, Danny DeVito also de- was a producer, not just on this, but on How High. So there is some weird connection. I'm going to keep mm. throwing these fun facts at you, but I just want to point out with this last fun fact is how much this movie is not good. Do you know the next movie this director did, which became the last movie he did for 
more than two decades. The cabbages, the cabbages kill. Yeah. Nearly two decades. The cabbages so, curse. I don't, I don't. <sighs> what do you think? What do you think he follows up this? this what year did with? Platoon come out? The English <laughs> patient. Way before <laughs> this shit. No. He directed uh, after this uh, after this movie, after Sunset Park. Steve uh-huh, Cohen, uh-huh. the director. You know what he directed? I'm just going to leave you with this. 1998's Barney's Great Adventure. And I'm talking about the purple dinosaur in his big screen debut. Two plus two is four. Uh, That's the (laughs) next film this guy did. And that is... Was it the first Barney movie ever? The first theatrical. Everything Barney movie afterward was a direct-to-video. So this was the one that went to the theaters? the one. And it was a box office bomb. He didn't make another movie until like 2017. Cabbage's Curse. It was called All Saints, and it was a faith-based film that did surprisingly well because of faith-based audiences. Barney's Great Adventure is what he followed this movie with, and that's all I want to say. I'm just going to be throwing these facts a whole episode because you're going to want to talk about basketball, and I'm just going to be like, did you know? Did you know? The title says it itself. It's great. The movie's great. I don't understand why I didn't hire him anymore. Let's just get to our guest. I am so happy to introduce our guest for today's show. Joining us now is Wynn, the Portland native, has been rapping since she was a teenager, but her 2023 EP, Some Like It Hot, caught the attention of hip-hop heads nationwide, myself included. She's already been dropping some great new tracks this year, including the singles Cut and Paste and Dirt parentheses poem which you can hear wherever music is streamed or sold hello and welcome to the show what's up thanks gary quite the intro thanks for having me i caught on to what you were doing last year you know maybe i'm a little late in certain senses but i feel like it was a good time to to get on board uh and one of the things that i noticed in your work which made sense why we would have to bring you on here is there's a lot of basketball references in your in your mm-hmm. in your music and your lyrics so i wanted and in the visuals of your music videos oh. as well yeah Jeff is a huge basketball fan, mm-hmm. full disclosure. I my am, favorite sport. Me too. I'm, an, I'm a novice. I've I've watched a couple of games in my life in person, mostly with Jeff, it seems at this point. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we started doing these these movies where basketball is increasingly part of This is really meant to be a movie where a season of our podcast where we're talking about rapper movies, rappers on, on screen, rappers behind the camera, and kind of how hip hop... Uh, shows up in movies but this is kind of that place in the in the middle so i just wanted to before we get started talking about this specific movie just uh i want to get into your experience with with basketball what is that it kind of means to you what how has it uh impacted your life totally yeah um i grew up playing basketball um my dad played basketball my brother played basketball uh my dad's dad was a women's basketball coach uh, for a long time and helped pioneer the women's size basketball back in the day. Um, so it's always been a big part of my life. And uh, I started playing, I don't know, really ever since I can remember, I was like at least out in the driveway with my brother. I feel like that's how you really get good is when you play with your older brother. Um, so I was doing a lot of that. And, you know, I grew up right outside of Portland in a suburb and so Blazers were our team. And this is back like, you know, when Brandon Roy was playing for us. And, you know, then we got Dame and that's when I really started to to pay attention and kind of be aware of what was going on. That's when I was like reaching my teenage years. And so, you know, I'm locked in Blazer fan for life. Big fan. I try to catch as many games as I can. And uh, so, yeah, obviously it's like so many people say it's like the this the the fifth element of hip hop. So and I, I believe it. I think it's true. Yeah, we definitely see that. And especially as as we've been doing these movies, basketball shows up a lot. You know, yeah. I feel like Jeff is picking some of these films on purpose uh, because he knows I know nothing about basketball really in the context. Like I grew up in New York and I played basketball yeah, that, with my friends. Are you but... are you are you jumping into a conspiracy theory? Are you no no I'm continuing existing I'm taking, conspiracy theory. I'm taking I'm taking heat here. Yeah, you're <laughs> taking just to sh- to movies, shove basketball movies. Listen, yeah, over if you again. go and you pick a hundred movies with rappers in it, 75 of them are going to be basketball movies. No, not that many. That's We've real. Proven that already. We proved that already on this. Or gangster films. Yes. Well, we, that's fine by me. I'm happy to watch those. 
Um, so we're just trying to figure out. So he's kind of putting me on my back foot. I don't really know. I know how to navigate all the time. So I, it's it's harder for me. He's having fun. Clearly, he's laughing it up. He's enjoying himself. I am. I'm having a great uh, time. Good to get out of your comfort zone. I'm Listen, yeah. we we mentioned Brandon Roy in a podcast. I'm okay. over oh, yeah. the moon. One of my favorite players of all time. Oh, Wildly yeah. underrated. If not for injuries, would have been one of the best players oh, yeah. the league oh, yeah. now. Yeah, he's a legend. Absolute legend. Yeah, I don't I don't have any frame of reference, but you know, I'm glad you guys are happy. <laughs> as long as you guys are happy, we're all right. Yeah, right. that's all that matters. Yeah. I'm excited because we're talking about a movie with Fred Rose Star. Yes. I grew oh, up in Queens. Onyx is a huge fan. You know, 1993. Yep. I'm a teenager. I'm in high school. I'm excited yep. Yep. to be hearing this stuff. It's representing where I'm from. It mixes my interest in hip hop with my interest in heavy metal, mixing up with basketball which again i was playing basketball out on the playground like we weren't doing yeah. it i wasn't serious about it like so for me it was just all these elements came together in the right way and i think were you disappointed out, it was in brooklyn uh, well i had to accept that fredro star was technically lived in flatbush until he was a teenager it's true so i the one thing that i try to do is i do the research so it's like okay i recognize when we're telling a story uh this is based on a true story loosely enough that it's really not credited as that it's like someone yeah, read yeah. an article and it, it made it into it but this is not oh, sunset yeah. park is not like a straight oh, tooth yeah. versus kind of the the thing that precedes it which we'll probably talk about quite a bit this which is dangerous minds which mm. came out a year before in 1995 that is based on someone's story it is based on you know the character who uh michelle pfeiffer plays in that movie her her story is what that is about mm. so this is different. This is kind of taking inspired by more than anything else on this. But I was so excited because we have yet to, we've been doing this now for a couple of seasons and we haven't touched anyone from Onyx yet. We haven't done a Sticky Fingers movie yet. We haven't done a Fred Star movie yet. Um, technically not in this season, but technically we have watched a movie with Sticky Fingers in it. Yes. Yes. A Leprechaun but, film, I believe. Yes. But we're, okay, we've cool. done, we've done. I just we wanted, I wanted to remember. No, no. That's all. I'm not. No, I'm not calling have, you out. Yes. No. This is not a we, conspiracy. We did a whole season of Leprechaun. Yes. Movies. We did all of the. We did all of them. All <laughs> the, the way original through, all six. The, the original six, which includes Leprechaun in the Hood and Leprechaun Back to the Hood, which uh, <laughs> to the Hood, which yeah. uh, the first one has Ice T, uh, so that was like, uh, uh, so it was worth it. You one know, of so the we, best rappers turned actors. Oh yeah, like we're we're here. We do trans. a side. We yeah. do a side series where we just talk about Ice T movies. Um, we're just like just thing time. two of us just like we'll watch this stuff it's some of it nice is tuesdays wild coming nice soon tuesdays it keeps going <laughs> ongoing ongoing so had you seen sunset park before we asked you to i had never this? seen it before i had never seen it we did an episode on blue chips and we mm -hmm. had a guest on and he was closer to my age and we sort of he mentioned this movie right away when i asked him what his favorite basketball movies were mm -hmm. um are are you a fan of basketball movies have you watched many are there any particular favorites of yours yeah, I mean, I love White Men Can't Jump. That's one of my favorites for sure. Just so we're clear, you're talking about the OG? White oh, Men yeah. Can't Jump? Okay, great. I haven't great. seen the new one. Have you guys seen the new one? We covered it. We covered it. Yeah. We had an episode on it, yeah. What it's a the, real piece of the shit. Rating? Oh. It's, not, it's not the same. It's not yeah, the if same. If we could give it a rating, I think we would decline. <laughs> I think we would decline the rating. Yeah. You what know, does it happen? I didn't see anybody, like, obviously it was talked about when it was coming out and I saw the trailer or whatever. Just because it was Jack Harlow, and obviously it's sure. a classic, so so people are nervous for it to be remade. But then once it came out, I didn't hear anybody talk about it, and I was like, no. oh, it's not worth checking out. That movie would probably be considered worth discussing if yeah. it were not being billed as a reboot of a film that is beloved. Right, right. And like we went, we went back afterwards and watched that, watched the original, you know, just it's because so yeah, I've seen it that again. thing like a hundred and fifty times. Yeah. I can yeah, quote so it to good. you. And it was a pleasure after seeing the new one. It was a pleasure to see Gary watch the old one and be like, this is good. What happened? So, I'm like, yeah, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> like, that's why we're all mad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they remade it. I mean, I know why, obviously, for money, but joyless yeah. cash grabs. Same reason did the, ha the uh, house party reboot. Same director uh mm. as well so yeah true which we saw we did not cover on episode but we did see it in the theaters so uh opening night another basketball movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah we true really, we really saw that but i would like to point out that there is a connection between these basketball movies between white man can't jump and sunset park 
Totally. And that is that there are two credited writers on Sunset Park. One of them is a gentleman named Seth Svi Rosenfeld. Uh, the other is a woman named Kathleen McGee Anderson. Now, uh, Seth Rosenfeld uh, was a playwright in the 1980s. And he was married, in a relationship with, with and then ultimately married for some time to, now divorced, uh, Rosie Perez, who we all know from oh, White Man Can't Jump. When you start watching the types of movies that we do and the volume of it, you start to find these weird little connections in these, these things. Obviously, the, the the most apparent reason why this movie exists out in the world is because of Dangerous Minds, which falls into this kind of lineage of movies about high school teachers or principals of authorities in school settings, in urban city settings, trying to help kids through not just academics, but the realities of of their lives and some do it very well i mean i think lean a lot me. of these films yeah lean on me is a great example of that stand and deliver is a film i watched a lot Excellent. uh when i was younger but dangerous minds did it for essentially for a hip-hop generation and yeah obviously we know the coolio song and kind of what that did uh for its prospects so there's a timeline that i want to share because it sort of explains how this movie comes out you know a less than a year later so the director of this, Steve Gomer, uh, had, had done two movies before this. One was just a, a little indie. The one was a Sundance favorite uh, called Fly By Night, which was a hip hop movie. MC Light is in it. We haven't watched it yet, but we probably will on a later date. Danny DeVito, who's a producer on Sunset Park, saw this and wanted him to direct this Sunset Park picture that he was interested in having. Dangerous Minds. Shot in 1994 with some reshoots in January of 1995. Debuts in August of 1995. Big success. Hmm. Sunset Park had filmed at the beginning of 1995, January, February. And it was in theaters by April of 1996. So within a relatively short time after Dangerous Minds takes off, this is, I want to say, fast-tracked into theaters. But one other interesting factor why I keep bringing up Dangerous Minds is that Fredro Starr was supposed to be in Dangerous Minds. Hmm. he was originally supposed to be in it but he had to beg off apparently because he was contractually obligated with onyx to uh do this tour with dr dre oh like, what a shame that was a- <laughs> <laughs> oh no you, you were in a you were in a more fun movie <laughs> and a more fun tour what a terrible thing to have happen well well more fun i didn't um, say better I said the problem fun. is is that the tour got cancel no no oh, that sucks so he that was sucks. no longer able to commit to it he did however get to be uh in an episode of the dangerous minds tv show that came out in 1996 thank so god this so i want to you watch that show gary of that no no it was only on for like one okay. season it was, yeah. like on, it was on fox for like a season all this is just to provide this is where i could do like i said my basketball knowledge is not existent i'm probably about as good of a coach as Rhea Perlman's character was this movie. <laughs> I can offer about the same amount of this. If they want to know about movies, I'm happy to talk to them about that, but I cannot. I don't know when she's, I didn't realize some of the things that she was saying at the very beginning, how tone deaf they were. Mm. That's how bad it was for me. It just was understanding. I don't understand. You were like, what's the problem, guys? Why are you mad? <laughs> right. <laughs> but I was so surprised that we were dealing, that the story begins with somebody who had absolutely no knowledge or understanding of basketball at all decided to do this. That's an interesting choice to start with, don't you think? Yeah, I thought that was kind of lunatic. I mean, I think it's, you know, interesting. She's a white woman applying for a job that she's completely unqualified for and gets the job. And, you know, it seems kind of classic, but, but yeah, just a weird choice. I don't understand why we're doing this. Why are, why is this person choosing to to do this thing that they're clearly not qualified for beyond simply the money right. and thinking that it's going to work and thinking that they're going to somehow fail upwards. Right. Uh, and it's extraordinary that fast forward, we get to the finals, if you will. Yeah. With the city finals with, at MSG. With her having learned, I'd say, no, not Nothing. much more than any of us did watching this movie. Yeah. About basketball. Yeah. Didn't make sense to me. So neither of you wanted to suspend your disbelief. No. For this movie. Okay. Fair I enough. was I was just kind of like it's not enough to me that she's like you know, 
a little bit emotionally invested and like a, a motivating person like that doesn't teach people how to play basketball and turn like a totally losing team into a going to the championship team and having 15 wins in the in a row that was just to me a little bit too much of a stretch she didn't seem like a, a teacher who was invested in the kids that she was well, I mean that's with. a trope that's like a, a wild trope in these types of films right? right you know the ones that we named lean on me stand and deliver dangerous minds they're like a separate trope from this one just a little bit where mm -hmm. it's a, a a wildly caring individual someone who probably cares too much right. is now trying to turn the teachers as well but there's also a sort of walter mathowian if i can make up a word uh, Walter Mathowian this to this where it's just like yeah man my whole thing is I'm going to come in I'm just going to kind of sit there they're going to play I get my paycheck and I split right and I would I wouldn't I probably would be on both of your sides except my dad did this with soccer <laughs> <laughs> no it was like the soccer coach quit they were like we don't have a coach you know, what are we going to do? And my dad was like, oh, whatever. I've coached three other sports. I'll, I'll coach this one too. And he came out and he started kind of running fast breaks, you know, with the ball. Yeah. He's like, all right, we're going to break up and we're just going to treat it like basketball. And one of the kid's parents rolled up and was like, do you know how to play soccer? <laughs> he was yeah. like, absolutely not. I know very precious little about <laughs> soccer. And he's like, do you mind if I run drills? And he was like, nope. Then he would go sit in his car and like read the paper and drink. That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and it was like straight up Walter Matthau shit. And I watched this with that eye where I was like, this person didn't think that they were going to care. Now, you know, and, and ended up caring. Was it super well documented in the film? No. Right. No, it wasn't. Um, they They definitely could have done some character development there, but... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't completely disbelieve the idea that someone would just take the job for the money and not care about these kids. Happens all the time, yeah. for sure. I mean, that to me was a little more believable, just like out of the sheer selfishness. I think people tend to be pretty selfish, but I also the the part that I didn't believe was how far the team got with how little she was invested. Completely that's, fair. <laughs> that's where I was lost. And even just like, I mean, I'm I'm sure we'll get into this the scene, but just like when you could see her start to care a little bit about the players and Terrence Howard comes in with the knife and he's like, I'm going to go kill my teacher. And all she says is put the knife in the drawer and he does it. And then she like goes up to him and, and whatever curses out the teacher, but there was never an emotional conversation there. It was just put the knife in the drawer. And like, that was kind of it. So I didn't, I didn't feel the emotional investment from her. And then ultimately her being like, I'm going to leave the team and go start a restaurant. It was like, what? She doesn't care. Here's the thing. Do we believe she would be a better basketball coach or restaurateur? I don't even know. She I, she might know as much in, about restaurants as she does about basketball. In which I case, think she knows so less hard. about restaurants than basketball by the end of this film. Well, that's that a hard much. business to get into if you don't know yeah. anything. <laughs> I don't I know. Mean, I don't see her cook anything in no, the entire no. thing. No. She's now no. talking about going this alone after her uh, deadbeat boyfriend. I believe she says in it, I don't even know how to cook. When yeah. she decides not to do it, and we're just like, I don't even know how to cook. Like, <laughs> like, what is the lead audacity? With that. <laughs> What's the audacity of this woman? I kind of love her. <laughs> no. Yeah. She, she, <laughs> this impestuous weirdo who's just like, whatever I can do to make money and not teach anymore. I understand I that completely. Yeah. Teaching yeah. is wild, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I get the idea of wanting to like move to the Virgin Islands and like thinking that's going to be the next like exciting move as you could collect your your pension after 20 totally. years of teaching. But like, obviously, we're dealing with a, a damaged lead. And I think like like you're talking about, Matt, you know, Walter Matthau, Bad News Bears. There's plenty of tropes. There was that recent Woody Harrelson movie. Uh, it was called Champions, I think. I watched that on a plane. Like that's another example of sort of like the reluctant, like it's like your punishment is you have that to one was, this, that one coach was... this team. Much better than this one. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, shockingly like, so. Wasn't there like a Farrelly brother involved in that one? Like, it's there's a little more. There's a little more. Yeah, like I didn't get too deep into it. Comedic plane. history to it. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of fell plane. asleep a couple times. But the all I'm saying is that you have this like these tropes that mash up, but they're just not aligned right. When she does flip, 
it seems to happen in an unnatural way. The, the scene Part of it too with, is that it's a busy ass movie. A yeah, lot half, happens yeah. to these kids. I mean, yeah. one of them wants to kill a teacher. One of them gets shot. Yeah, yeah. and it's all one very, of them goes to jail. Very emotionless. Like there's never any emotion. Like when he gets shot, there's no like. She doesn't even seem affected. She just kind of pulls up and is like, "He's gonna be fine," you know. And no, well, it's very emotionless. We watch these movies twice for every every episode. Jeff mm-hmm. had seen this before. I had not seen this movie before, so I still watch it twice my, this time around. On my first viewing, I, oh, I sort of said like, "Oh, this is like an after school special movie, but like better written. Mm. Like this is the kind of thing that would like show up like." on tv but like the writing is better and what i sort of i why the writing is better is because the script that written by the two people i mentioned before the script was a little old had been around for a little bit so it wasn't like it didn't really have the right language in it and so fredro star offered to punch it up and so all those scenes where the guys are talking in the locker room and they're shit talking and they're bragging and lying in pretty much all those cases yeah. like those guys are doing the thing that's that's them just they know where they need to go where the scene needs to go and they're just sort of speaking to each other and then then Rhea Perlman will come in and then that will move the actual premise so but you so you're saying that buying a whole chicken for someone does not guarantee sexual intercourse. You're the one from the South. I'm I'm from New York. You're from North Carolina. This movie was you in New York. Was yeah, this was your wrong. people's idea. But <laughs> he was talking about an encounter he had in the South. True. So I have to defer to you on this. I mean, we've got I've got Pacific. I would I left here. the South at like 13 years old. Okay. So well, I leave the South at 13 years old. It's not no, true. okay. Let's be honest. But I didn't buy any chickens until I was like 19. By and law. that's why you're single. Well, this one's for that's space. You're saying. The chicken story is definitely one that perplexed me the first time around and didn't create it. Was that made up or was that in the script? I don't know. No way that was in the script. There's no yeah, way an adult human was that. like, yeah. There's no yeah. way a fully formed adult human was like, what we'll do is we'll have a makeup story about buying chicken. Yeah. To made, hook up with, with Southern chicks. Yeah, it made no sense. I forgot I about doubt that. that. I brought it up, but that was pretty funny. I, I laughed at it both times. No, it's <laughs> it really funny. Got me both times. Yeah. If it's man brought funny. me, if man brought me a chicken, I'd be pissed. Right. <laughs> I'd be so that's, pissed. that's what I did want to ask because that's oh. like a little too forward. No, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I needed to know. Yeah. Be like, totally. Excuse me. Yeah. No, you need yeah. to leave. Terrible. No. Terrible idea. This is not. Chicken. This is not going to work. <sighs> but what about but turkey? I, but uh, no, any kind of large, any bird. No live birds. birds. No, no live birds. birds. Okay. No live animals. No animals. I Got love it. animals. Maybe sure. like a fish, you know, but like okay. anything more than that. Not even a fish. If we just have to talk me, if you're approaching me with a live animal, you're done. If you give someone a fish, they won't have sex with you. But if you teach someone to fish, mm, it's, it's a lifetime, a lifetime of sexual intercourse. Bars. I feel like if we I forget detach ourselves, that. I think it was Ben it, Franklin. I think it was you. I think if we detach oh. ourselves yeah. from that particular context, what we're really seeing in that scene is that young men lie about their yeah. sexual the, the locker room prowess, talk. Their the locker room talk, talk while while dialed back because it's it's a Hollywood film. You can't really like capture that without it being a little more gritty. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was pretty good. I thought that, yeah, that felt like the most. And it awesome. doesn't, yeah. It yeah. doesn't surprise me that they sort of riffed a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a whole lot of like clowning on each other. The, the locker room is, is clown town. Mm. This is where you clown on people. Mm. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They could be doing the most noble work on earth mm. and you're going to make fun of them for it. And you're going to try and get them to stop doing it just to see if you can. Mm. Just to see if you can make them a worse person. Locker rooms are awful places. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, cannot literally cannot imagine and would would rather lick a foot than be stuck in a boy's high school locker room. Oh. Same. I had to do it. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Uh. Oh man. Terrible. A lot of the uh, the plot progression happens in that locker room. 
over and over again. Which yeah. again, like I feel like we're but we're that's where basketball seasons is. progress. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm the not, games I'm not are judging. short. The time in right, the locker yeah. room is long. Yeah. Mm. I'm fully acknowledging that, like, I know. I don't, like, yeah, I didn't mean that to like yell at you. Sorry. No, well, you mean yell. Hey, let me tell you something else about basketball, Gary. See, this is why <laughs> I keep trying to tell you. It's just like, it's not my, it's not my area of expertise. Bullying you. Crazy. But where it yeah, is, my, where my, I'm going to keep bringing back my half assed areas of expertise as much as I can, which is like this movie, when it was originally shot, Dangerous Minds had not come out yet. Hmm. There was no incentive for this movie to have a large budget it has a small budget so most of the scenes shot in locker room high school outside directly outside the high school there are very few scenes outside of these settings they're almost apartment yeah sure one movie theater just sets yeah like it's just in those places which is fine but it means a lot of things happen in the locker room. And like there is a trope that happens in a lot of movies that we watch, particularly in the gangster movies, but a lot of tropes that we watch, where people confess to crimes in public settings loudly. Mm-hmm. And it happens again in this film in the locker room where Fredro Starr in Act 3 admits to having been the one with the gun. Mm-hmm. Admits to having it in front of a room that was, of people for this movie, who are that all was mad a pretty wild twist. Uh, uh, sorry, twist. Everyone's yeah. mad at him in that scene. Everyone, because he yeah. basically blew off the the semifinals game. He yeah. blew it off, and they they won, but he blew it off the whole time. But by the grace to... of God, they won. But yeah, they, they... somehow, somehow, some way, they're somehow. a ragtag bunch. They're yeah. a ragtag bunch, and they figured it out on the fly. Yep. And you know what? Bless them. No, Bless them. no, Bless I can't them. get over that. I can't. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's skill involved. One thing like, I'll say: both of you have played basketball. Jeff, your dad was a basketball coach. Like both of you have basketball in your family history. In your this movie it's in my has blood, to it's true. It, like break yeah, was... something in your brain. And me, yeah, well, has it. To be fair, if there's a genre of movie I've probably watched the most of, it would be sports films. Mm. I came from a sports film family. We love a wildly stupid vaguely inspirational sports film it's right up our alley it just is what it is like the movie i maybe watched the most in my life is well other than the naked gun which has an extended baseball scene is major league yeah so i have watched a, a shit ton of sports movies and i just don't have expectations anymore because mm-hmm. it, there's things that i like there's things there's little small things in this that i really enjoyed like uh the team gets pushed around real hard at the beginning again the first game they win against the hated morning side squad mm-hmm. fuck first of all fuck morning side fuck morning side thank morning you side. at least we all agree here that those again. guys were dicks yeah. we don't like all my homies hate morning side all of them Facts. Facts. All of them. so when morning side's beating them up a little bit and then they start getting a little chesty. Then later they start being the ones that talk shit. And that's when the run starts. In most sports movies, that's explained better. Yeah. And by the coach. Yeah. And that's what you don't, because she's not a coach, she can't do that. Yeah. And well, I mean, I her inspirational people... speeches are essentially, do you guys want to lose? Right. <laughs> that's that's it was pretty a... much it. She was only like a little bit motivating and it didn't feel like there was any leader, really. It didn't feel like anybody yeah. was eating the bunch. There was no alpha. Like they were kind of just clowning her the whole time. And it they was, did a lot of clowning. It'd be more believable to me because everybody in sports loves a miracle. Everybody loves an underdog story. Mm-hmm. If there was like if they won a game, you know, but they won like mm-hmm. 20 games or 16 yeah. games. Whatever, and they went to the championship. So and you'd that, rather have the necessary roughness. We won a game at the end of the season yeah. than the city championship. Yeah, I, I want somewhere in the middle. Like if they made the playoffs and then got like curb stomped by a good team. Yeah, that would have been fine with me. But for I'm them to take win the championship, that was cool. Because that would that would have been too. Pred- I mean, the whole thing felt so, a little bit. Predictable. And that's that would have been like. There's nothing that makes you want to like rerun it or run it back more than barely losing. You mm-hmm. want another shot. You want another shot so bad. I mean, I played countless hours of street ball 
mm-hmm. and would be a good team that just ended up losing to somebody who got hot. They yeah. didn't do anything correctly. They were not that good a team. They had one dude who could just put it in from anywhere. Right. And nothing makes you want to run it back. And be like, you guys stay with me. Let yeah. them play. And we're staying together. We're taking next. Yeah. We're right. going to kick this team's ass. And it, you know, that motivated her to come back, which yeah. is wild because none of the cool things that she did for these kids made her want to come back. She was oh. like, no, I don't want to lose to these dudes. Yeah. <laughs> That's bothered, what I'm coming back for. It bothered me that she never, I mean, it was clear that, uh, what is his, uh, what was Fred Rose's character's name? Shorty? Shorty Dua. Shorty Dua. Shorty, it was clear that he was acting out because of what she said. And it was weird. She never figured that never out. never addressed it. Like never. she never brought it up and then just was kind of a dick about it. I'm like, yeah. girl, she was being, so she was being so exposed, aware. right? Like she was being exposed yeah. and couldn't be vulnerable. Yeah. But again, not well explained or acted or written. Right. It's like yeah. there's a, there's a chance right there where right. this movie could have vaulted from something I would rather enjoyed to something I would like rewatch a million yeah. times. Like, had she not said that very last piece in the locker room about, like, we're coming back next year, there would have been zero character development. None. So like, that's, like, the bare minimum at the end. And especially because her goal that she sets out to early on in this film is so unrealistic from the start and is Wildly immediately and is immediately torpedoed by the deadbeat boyfriend stealing their TV and VCR and 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 dishing her like that is in any other scenario someone should just be like i need to reassess and make new goals i mean first and foremost the amount of money a broke ass school and i get the feeling it wasn't ever really addressed per se but i get the feeling sunset park high is a little it's new york city public schools they didn't make any money in 1996 and so no 1996 i had a father as a coach in the system and it wasn't about money <laughs> like he wasn't doing this for like a shitload of money and he got paid a little extra but it wasn't about money and it, it would have been one paycheck she would have looked at that one paycheck and been like perhaps someone with some basketball experience should take over here i'm i'm yeah. i'm not doing this yeah it's not worth it the Maybe. stakes in this movie are wildly low because of this plan yeah. If there was something on the table, it doesn't have to be as old school and stupid as like a sick grandma or any or sick mom or something. No. Yeah. But it could be more than move to an island, which is impossible. Move to an island and start a restaurant. Right. I don't care if you fail. Yeah. There's and plenty of restaurants on that island, I'm sure. They never really brought up that goal again. It's like we didn't, I don't, we never really felt her struggle with that. So it, it felt wasn't. like kind of a pointless thing to bring up in the first place as a goal. No. The struggle she, is is wildly overshadowed by these continued problems we, we mentioned before. Yeah. Like these escalating wild issues that these kids had, which yeah. is realistic to a point, but also like, that is a lot. That is so much that like we don't get a chance really to hang out with the teacher much unless she's with one of the kids or nursing one of the kids out of out of the situation. What this movie kind of turns into to me is the relationship between the coach and Shorty. Right. Most of the scenes are them talking to the side, right. interspliced with like a little of his life in basketball scenes. Yeah. Most of this film is them talking. And it's just like figuring it out. It's kind of a weird, not like a weird relationship, but it's like No, you're right. It's a little weird. Like there's not like sexual tension or like real flirting or anything. There's none of that stuff. It's just like how often are you gonna how long are you gonna hang out with this kid? Yeah, there's like tinges of it. Go do stuff. Yeah, it's like she's like a like a middle-aged woman who doesn't really know anything about basketball and he's like not not flirting with her like he kind of like jokingly asked her out and then they ended up going out to dinner and it was just kind of like there's also this like mom energy and this like kind of sexist angle about how much they're clowning her it was just a weird like which was deserved by the way like yes you you took over a basketball team you don't know what a basketball is i don't well and also you don't get clown that's that's what basketball teams do but if it was like a guy teacher 
like they were more like playing with her about it. It was kind mm. of a soft, like flirtatious kind of like playfulness. Whereas if it were a male teacher, they would have like cursed him out, you know, it would have been like, yeah. why'd you take this job? But instead they like entertained it because she was a woman. Mm. So it was like kind of That's a playful, like they kind of played around her and made her a joke and then all warmed up to her, despite the fact she had no idea what she was doing. When when she starts trying, I do like this actually. When she starts trying to call plays and coach, yeah, they're like, no, nah, dude, like this is this is basketball one hundred and one. We know yeah. how to do this stuff. Yeah. We and need like way- we need complex plays. We need to be able to get people open. Yeah, the way the the character with the goggles, I can't remember his name, when the ref comes up and starts yelling at her because she doesn't understand something, the way he gets up and defends her. Is he, is be, like, yeah. he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have done that for a guy coach. You know, like there was this kind no, of- No, you've got to handle it yourself, big dog. Yeah, <laughs> it's just how yeah. that goes. Yeah, and, and she I, just kind of like submitted- I like that he gets thrown out of the game and he's like, I'm staying right here. He stays right. through the rest of the game. He's like, what are you going right. to come over here and yeah. physically throw me out? I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah, so- So we got to talk about the poem, huh? I was I was trying to get us to that point. Like it's just they're just not experienced in the way of, of communicating with women and girls, and the and the, the reality you, is is that they're just is that but, the the awkward interactions has a lot to do with that. As I feel as like that it. was a total missing angle of the whole movie. Was like that's part of the whole point is that it's a woman coach coming in working with a bunch of guys who don't know how to interact with women. Like that should have been addressed. Like they barely touched on the race thing and it was super surface level. And that also felt like a huge missing link to me. I'm like, how are we not talking about the fact that none of these guys know how to treat or talk about women based on how they're talking about women in the locker room. And then their female coach comes in and like, that's never addressed. That was weird to me. I mean, it's got its flaws, this film, but it found yeah. its way into my heart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, have you ever written a letter? I want to talk for like, just a second. You, I want to talk about the letter with yeah. you because I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. you've been itching for that. Have you ever written a letter of, or like that? Oh, somewhere? absolutely not. I am a coward. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I do want to ask this about, no. I do want to ask this about um, about the the poem letter. It, 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 is it a poem? Doesn't matter. I think it the, rhymes in places. The letter, is it cringe because it's written to be from, from a 16-year-old mm. or who is like a virgin and is doesn't really know how to talk about these things? Or is it cringe because it's fucking weird <laughs> that like maybe an adult wrote this from the yeah. mindset of a child? I don't know. I, I flip-flopped on my watches on whether or not it should have been cut from the film. It was, it was, um, it was like. I was uncomfortable as it was read. I was, it was like. It was cute. Oof. Like a six-year-old wrote yes. it. Type right. shit. You know, it's like a little the, too young for 16, I feel like. Yes. It like, does. I like, like the ocean. Cool. Do you want to go to the ocean with me and make love? Right. <laughs> it, it does sound like an adult, a full-grown adult wrote it thinking that a 16-year-old who's a virgin would write something like that. But it's like. They his character was way like slicker than that. Like yeah. he was definitely yeah, like the way that part. they're talking to each other. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I felt the yeah. same way. At the end of the day, I was like, "Nah, you got to cut it. That's yeah. not a great look." Yeah. I, I mean, and for I her think to that... be so enamored with him, be like, "Yeah, definitely send this." Then you're not. Then maybe you weren't a woman. Maybe you're wrong. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why I'm affording so much grace to this movie. Clearly, having not enjoyed it as much as either of you, I'd say I, really I probably have the it. least of it. I'm just like to me, I'm like well, decisions. You know, I told you at the beginning, maybe writing when is we were going to watch it. Set. I said, get ready for some weird decisions. They make some, some weird, weird decisions. decisions they in do. This movie. They do. Some yeah. of them are endearing, and some of them aren't. Yeah, I did. And the ones that aren't are really annoying. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't say that. My the best part about it to me was like how flabbergasted I felt the whole time. Yeah, just kind of waiting for something to have a little bit of depth, or like the way she said "fantabulous" unironic, yes. just like pissed me off. Fantabulous! Like, you can't out of nowhere a locker room and say a lifelong on the nose, a like, lifelong Brit- uh, uh, Brooklyn resident walked into a, a 
room full of humans and said the word fantabulous. Like that's just so unbelievable to me. Fantabulous. There's a, there's a lot of words that my my mother, born in the Bronx, lived in the Bronx and Queens her whole life. A lot of words she said over the years. Fantabulous. Not not one. on the list. Yeah, not, not on the list. Them. I had a feeling. No. <laughs> it's and bad. it's not like she was played off to be this kind of like perky preppy like 21 year old it's like she's probably 40 something in this movie and had nothing like preppy about her it was so weird you know that she's trying as an actress to not just fall into the character that she played on tv for 11 years Mm, prior to this she was she was carla tortelli on cheers and everyone knew her as this kind of wise. It was one of the most beloved shows harsh. of all time. Yeah. And like she never got around that. Like that character lived and continues to like that's what people think of her. That's what they think of her for. It's I mean, true. people have seen her things like Matilda or other stuff. She did a lot of kind of family fair and kids stuff, but she sort of lived and died around that, mm-hmm. that role. And she was like 48 when when she did this. So she was far enough along in her career that by the time she gets this this movie, like she's like has to figure out how to be somebody else. So I get that it would have been easier for her just to be kind of snarky and wisecracking, but that's not what the script called for. But it also, she's not done much in the way of favors in how she communicates. If she's supposed to be credibly somebody who worked in the New York city public school system for 20 years, this is not how it works. I had those teachers. I had all those teachers. I know those people, none of them reflect that. And she was the gym teacher. Yeah. It's like what? Yeah, yeah. she's the, the yeah, other thing a, with that. Too. As a gym teacher, I'm. You're gonna know at least a little about Brooklyn? basketball. You're yeah. gonna know a little a bit little, about basketball. A little. Yeah. But yeah. also, like, as a somebody who has been an educator in whatever way you, however you want to describe it, for twenty years, you can assume she's been P the whole time. But like, I don't know. Maybe she's done other things. But she's been an educator for twenty years, and when a situation arises where two of the kids in her class are failing out never once does it occur to her that maybe she should be the one tutoring these people working with these kids helping them it's like no help each other you both have divergent skill sets maybe you can make it work yeah when she was like shocked that she was supposed to be helpful in that regard i was like girl you're dumb fair fair criticism and and i'm i'm not coming from the other side on this but, but it are. did seem it well, it did seem like she was sort of playing a character who was lazy about it all. Right. But she was yeah. checked out, she had senioritis, she didn't want to do it anymore. Right. But and they should have leaned into that more. She if if that was the agree. case, she was not nearly enough of a caricature of herself. Agree. And then it, it makes the like <clears throat> kind things that she does along the way, it makes it a little more unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, she just felt kind of like a bland character. Like, is this a good person? Is this a bad person? I don't know. Yeah. I will say that she committed perjury for someone she'd met two weeks before. So that's, that counts for something. Counts I don't for know something. what it counts for, but it counts for something. Yeah. Still Gary not- disagrees. It's just there's a recklessness. He's so to mad. The this movie wasn't this bad. I think we're. Crushing it is it, actually this bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's it's not that bad. I disagree. What was good? No. Man, it was like fun. I like the character. Like, which was your favorite character? Who's your favorite member of the team? It was probably Shorty. Shorty. Yeah. Gary. Oh, it's Spaceman. One hundred percent. It has to be Spaceman. Yeah. Spaceman is awesome. <laughs> Fun. Everything Spaceman does is a direct, like direct opposite of what they ju- what he just did. Yeah, <laughs> like he goes from being like a total space cadet that doesn't bother anybody to wanting to kill his teacher. Yeah, to... that that pissed me off because <laughs> mm-hmm. that was so not the tone of the movie. No, it wasn't he, wild he choice. No, there's no part of that character. Do you think he's gonna walk into her office with a knife? And also, he doesn't even seem to like her enough to trust her enough to walk into her office with a knife to to be knocked off the edge. And if you're that lunatic that you're about to kill your teacher with a knife that looks like that, you're not about to just put it's it cool in that quickly. I counted amongst the many cool knives I've seen in my lifetime. 
But yeah, where does he get it? It seems particularly from? wild to want to stab someone with it or carry it oh, around. Where did he find it? Dund- it's Crocodile Dundee. He found it from the Crocodile yeah, Dundee okay, set. Fair, like, it's just fair. like, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Like, so it's you think so- he just like found it in a room somewhere and was like, I want to use this. And they were like, you got it. But right. they set they set no tone. You're absolutely <laughs> right. They set no tone for him having any sort of violence. They do it. He afterwards. was kind of impish and goofy. Like my yeah. one of my favorite scenes with him is where he's in the back of the bus and he just kind of goes, <laughs> like shrinks down to smoke a little pot. Like yeah. I love that scene. Like that was that part's hysterical because that for little space bit man. of it is just right. great. You do it for space yeah. man. But like, I love that little bit. Man. You know, like that doesn't yeah. fit with wanting to murder your teacher with a with a knife like that. And that, that should be. It came and went like yes. it, it could have taken it out of the movie and it wouldn't have later. <laughs> later, they exploit this in a scene that should have happened beforehand where mm-hmm. it's revealed that the reason he keeps smoking weed is because he has like a violent, murderous temper mm-hmm. and that the weed helps. First of all, just going to throw this out there. Not entirely the way weed works. Uh, <laughs> secondly, but like blaming 80s and 90s movies for not getting weed right like you've got to be mad at every single movie right. uh but i will also say they they bring up his temper later and then that's who fredo goes after in the locker room yeah yeah of yeah. all the people like the one who like he's like you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go after the dude that wanted to stab his teacher and yeah. like, has bro, to take drugs not to kill you. us yeah he would destroy absolutely short- from that fight scene, one of those shots actually hit. One of uh, Fredro Starr's punches actually did hit Terrence Howard. It was an accident, but no. Terrence Howard apparently was real heated about it. Oh, yeah. That's a big, big deal. Like yeah. when you're not expecting to get punched in the face and you get punched in the face, it doesn't matter if you're fake fighting or not. Like survival instinct's not there. And really, I'm sure it, I'm sure it hurt real bad. You know, another problem I had was the way that he was talking about how he like he kind of likes this girl and he's a virgin and he's testing out the poem. And then he asks his coach out on a date kind of jokingly and then you don't hear about it again. And then suddenly, like, she's his girl. And it was like, oh, wait, you're you're talking about Cheryl. Is it Cheryl? Cheryl. 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 Also not a big Cheryl fan here. It was like suddenly suddenly he walked. The, the last I thought was like, he's trying to holler at this girl, but like, he's, it's not really going to happen. And like, she doesn't really know he exists. So do you think he delivered the letter? You see them, he's like in love with her and walks out and is upset that she's talking to someone else. And she doesn't even seem to really think he exists. So I was like, suddenly he's like, all there was feelings about it. I'm like, were you even with her? That was kind of exactly. weird. There exactly. There were si- But there were signs throughout that like led us to believe she was playing him but it was like it did right like she went and got money for tim's there and they sort of flirted but she like took the money and then split and then they weren't together for a while then he was like i want her to like me right so he was doing favors and he really again another thing that's not explained very well but i saw it you know the second watch i sort of noticed a little more like they're trying to make it out like She's paying attention to him specifically to like rip him off and right. It felt like, like string him along. Thing. Felt like there was a hole there. Like mm. we should have oh, seen, definitely. Her, seen him holler at her or something. Because the next time you see them and he's like pissed because they're supposed to be together. And she's what like, I what I love the most about her, uh, other than the fact that I'm not a big like I I don't like the way she's playing her boy. Yeah. But what I love the most is that. At first, she's very, it seems like in the crowd, she's very into Shorty. Mm. She's actually like, oh, I'm going to like sit down. I've never actually sat down and watched him play, but the letter has me thinking like, mm. what if he's the future, you know? Mm-hmm. And he plays, the the poorer he plays, the more poorly he plays, the less interested she is. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of his time in the game, which includes fighting with his own teammate, now she is now all but all over this new large dreaded man who maybe shouldn't be hanging out with high schoolers. He looked about 30. Yeah. That too. That's pretty tough. It that was a that was a tough one. But then again, everybody in this movie was almost 30. So yeah. I really can't talk a lot of shit. 
Uh, yeah, Ter- but Terrence Howard was a uh, 28. He's 28 uh, years old. Fredro Starr is 26. Like these yeah. are all, yeah. I mean, it was, it's hard sometimes. I mean, the, it's, the, that's always the joke with this anyway. The big so, man so ball handler, the big man ball handler was like larger than LeBron Jim. He was a big yeah, dude. Huge. huge. Like he's, if he's that big and that nimble at 16 yeah. and no college and no one in a college has found him, no one come get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah. How old was no. uh was how old was Shaq's character supposed to be in Blue Chips? <laughs> he was in college. He was college he was supposed age. To be a college age kid, like twenty. He's like gigantic and like 20, thirty. That's Ridiculous. This, no, it's just absurd. <laughs> oh man, there, I love there, it. There's a lot of absurdity to to this movie, and I feel like we've all brought up some really good points, especially when about what really makes this movie not work and i think that Mm. there is sort of an understanding as as someone who was a teenage boy that there is an immaturity and a lack of understanding about how to talk to to girls and Mm. that does play in and there also is this weird sort of thing like when he does yell at her from across the street there is sometimes this bizarre and i've seen this with you know i saw some of my peers guys who got the wrong idea of what their relationship with with the girl was they thought they had a girlfriend, but they never actually did. And the other person never understood that. Like they were either. Yeah, the reciprocation we, wasn't we, there, but mixed it, signals also, at mixed signals at 16 are wildly different than mixed signals at like 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like but when you I'm, get mixed signal, to, like, well, I'm just gonna split. But at 16, you're like, oh, but there's good signals. Right. But what I'm you trying know, like, to oh, I think yeah. I think it could happen. You just have zero yeah. idea of how to do this. Right. What I'm trying to point out is that if I'm going to give this movie any sort of grace, it's that what it seems to capture, even if inadvertently, it seems to capture that aspect of teenage life that they don't really understand how. Oh, yeah, they're dummies. These yeah. these work. And so that's yeah. how they can't how his like idea of he's like flirting with the teacher, you know, if, in some in some even if it's in a, in a platonic way, it's like he's too scared to ask this other woman his his young woman his age out but he can ask if his teacher wants to go to a kung fu movie although i think these are things that that that's all by younger actors too i mean yeah. it was weird watching old people talk like kids yeah, yeah. like mm. 90210 style weird where you're like but has there well, been you go back better... and you're like all of those people are like middle-aged this is wild <laughs> but has there been a better line in this film is there a better line in this film oh, and I, know, I know you have some favorites in this jeff better line in this film than sit on a twizzler go ahead you can I answer know. first that was pretty good there's I don't no know. no there's not a better line yeah <laughs> there's not it's the best it's the best line in the film yeah that was really sick I might have to think I that laughed one. so hard yeah what is that yeah what is that there is <sighs> one other contender for this Mm. And that is a character in the script known only and by apparently by his own choice as Boo Man, which is the heckler who eventually turns into a fan who shows up at the games. And he says some pretty heinous shit in this film. There is one line that I'm sure has burned a hole in Jeff's brain because it's kind of hard not to, but there's one line, and I wrote it down because it needs to be in there. And I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't bring it up. He says lines, and just leading up to this, he says lines in these first few games when they're whiffing it. He says, My grandmother plays better than you, butt naked and in flip flops. Mm. Which, like, fair argument. She mm. probably could have. They were a bad team then. Yeah. Yeah. But the line that really does it, and I feel like is the appropriate way to end this conversation is uh, because we were talking about the immature things that teenagers say, the immaturity of teenagers. Uh, Yo Mama jokes, obviously, being the kind of number one immature teen boy thing to say. I'll, I'll leave you all with this, uh, this, this quote. Oh. Your mom got fired from the sperm bank for drinking on the job. Mm. Ma, ma, yeah. just a, oh. <laughs> Like if name Kendrick, a more original if diss. Kendrick had used that in Euphoria. That's a diss track line. That's like Steal no that Vaseline, line. Yeah. Ether. If you're yeah. gonna pull from culture, 
That yeah. is one of the most vicious lines. That is I a think vicious, a drinking vicious on line. the job. Yeah, that's tough. Well, I, it's just so beautifully phrased. So beautifully phrased. And, I wrote that shit down, but I wrote it like with line breaks, like a poem. It's amazing. Mm, it's a haiku. A it's actually a haiku. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. Well, I <laughs> yeah. I might have to, I'll find a flip on that. I'll find a flip on that. See, I know you can do it. If Please anybody do. can integrate Please this do. in some oh, way, man. you could do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will I'm celebrate that song to the heavens. Absolutely. I can't wait to let you know when I come up with it. <laughs> I, I, I would love that. I'd love that very much. Gary. Yes, Jeff. Gary. Yes, Jeff. Do you mind if I talk a little basketball? I mean, you're dying listen, to. Go. Okay, listen. We didn't get to cover it before. And I I'm I'm they're good. It's not crazy to think that they're a, a good basketball team with issues. That while the coach doesn't solve many of the issues, it seems like per se, no. uh, having a presence there that cared was at least enough to get them to concentrate on the team. Now, I say this because they had an attacking point guard who, when motivated, could be a passer and a scorer. Okay. okay. They had a forward who was a creator and a good passer and could like help facilitate running the obviously have two ball handlers on the squad which in the mm. 90s huge deal at a high school level to have two dudes that could like distribute and put the ball in the bucket that's a big deal man that's a huge deal then on top of this they have a knockdown lights out shooter in drano okay that is a formidable backcourt frontcourt duo. Their bench has a Rodman esque pothead, a guy that can go in and get rebounds, can also be five extra fouls if need be. Maybe you don't trust him on offense, but he is somebody who can come in, give you energy, play some defense. That's a big deal to have. That's a really nice thing to have. This is a good squad. Even no. Busy B, if you think about the future of Sunset Park's team, they're all coming back, it seems like. They're all juniors and and below. Mm, no seniors on there, yeah. So they're, a bunch of them are going to be seniors. If, if you're to believe that Busy B is younger, because that's, I think, what we're supposed to believe, that mm -hmm. if he's a freshman and he's showing off moves off the bench and has this sudden zest for life, I mean, you've got to count on him improving in the offseason. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I don't know what you're saying. None and maybe you can teach any... Space Man a little more offense or something, but there's, listen, Who's they can go teach six him? to this, seven deep. This isn't a coach. They can, they can go six to seven deep, and they believe in each other. And I'm telling you, believing in each other as a team is a huge deal, Gary. No, They've got chemistry. No, no. If they concentrate, if they buckle down, and all they need is for, for the coach to get them to buckle down. And this will team just, is going to win you, next year's city championship. We just accept. Hey, I would pick a, them as the city champions the next year. It's a bad movie. It was a bad movie. You were reading so much into this. You were actually like, but that's trying not to find... crazy to think is what I'm saying. They are a good. Listen, get Zellerock on the phone. Guarantee. It's crazy. He's going to be like, oh, dude, those guys are going to murder the competition next year. What's crazy? I got them going undefeated. We're still, we're still watching these fucking basketball movies. I'm done with them. By that, the way. No, done? I'm I'm done. Done with basketball. Done. There You're never are going to watch another no, basketball. Movie? No, I don't want to watch for this. There's show not or one otherwise. movie I could bring you on a platter that you'd say, "Yes, I'll do it." Yeah, no, well, I'm in. No, no, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. No, and it has a rapper in it. That's the only way we would do it in the first place. I'm not just doing right. a fucking basketball movie that has no rapper in it. I will, I'm going to rappers. find. I'm going to find a movie. That is a basketball movie. Is is stars a rapper, and you're gonna want to watch it. I'm gonna find it. It's got to exist. We haven't watched that many basketball movies. We've watched enough, have we? Enough. It's the Cabbages Podcast Network. <laughs>